Thank you, Senator Allen, for the invitation to offer testimony on this important topic of creating and nurturing creative spaces for our communities. My name is Ali Yousefi. I'm a real estate developer based here in Sacramento. My father started developing affordable housing in California around the same time that the tax credit program started in 1986. Our company, CFY Development, builds multifamily and affordable housing throughout the state, and we are the developer, general contractor, and property manager for our communities. The Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program started in 1986 and is responsible for production of millions of units of affordable housing over the last 30 years. It is arguably the most important resource we have in the United States for the creation of affordable housing. CFY has built around 3,500 units and a range of affordable housing types. As a few examples, Globe Mills is a community for seniors that we completed in 2008. Ridgeway Studios is an SRO project here in downtown Sacramento. And Juniper Apartments is a large family tax credit community with 153 apartments in Manteca. I'd like to present in further detail this afternoon a unique type of affordable housing that is unlike anything CFY had previously built before. In 2011, CFY was presented with the opportunity of developing affordable housing in the historic R Street district of downtown Sacramento. The project site is located in our warehouse district, a unique corridor that was built in the late 1800s around a commercial railroad line that was one of the first in the state. The opportunity site included redevelopment of one of the corridor's most iconic buildings, the old Lawrence Fireproof Warehouse, which was built in 1909 and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The site included a vacant parcel of approximately 25,000 square feet. When we first approached the site, we knew we wanted to activate the ground floor with retail space to help further establish our street as a pedestrian-friendly neighborhood. We also knew that we wanted to add high-density housing, both by converting the upper levels of the historic warehouse to residential use and by building a new mid-rise building with housing on the upper floors on the corner of 12th and R Streets. But the concept wasn't just to build a mixed-use, mixed-income, transit-oriented, pedestrian-friendly development. It was to create a one-of-a-kind community for Sacramento area artists. An article in Fast Company in 2012 remarked, the key to a thriving creative class, give artists their own real estate developers. And this was by no means a new concept. I found examples across the country of affordable housing communities being built for artists. One of the most prolific developers in this field has been art space, and my fellow panelist Terry Deaver played a key role in the development of some of these properties. Our vision with Warehouse Artist Lofts, though, was to do something unique to Sacramento and authentic to its artists. Step one was defining what artists meant, and our definition is that an artist is a person who promotes or creates visual art, literary art, new media art, or performing art, a definition which captures a large segment of the creative class. Developing a mixed-use, mixed-income project is no easy task, and we put together a budget utilizing a variety of funding sources, including state Prop 1C infrastructure funds, historic tax credits, and a loan from the Capital Area Development Authority, whose participation was an integral part of the project. This is an image of the architect Mike Malinowski presenting to CADA's board during the entitlement process. The largest funding source was low-income housing tax credits, that same source of funding that our company has utilized for over 30 years to build affordable housing. On June 12, 2012, we were fortunate enough to receive an allocation of tax credits from the Low-Income Housing Tax Credit Allocation Committee, which put us in a position to start construction on the project in February of 2013. This is a picture of the corner of 12th and R Street just after the new mid-rise building took shape. As I mentioned earlier, we were committed to creating a community specific to Sacramento area artists. And one of the ways in which we did so was by getting to know Sacramento area artists early on in the process. This included administering a survey to learn more about the demographic and to gather specific information like what design features would be most important to an artist in a live work space. A few of the top answers included natural light, high ceilings, and easy to clean flooring, and we made a point of incorporating these suggestions into the design of the project. These are a couple images of one of our studio units, uh, which include those features. This is, this is an image of one of the units in the historic warehouse building. 
We also placed a strong emphasis on creating a variety of unique community spaces that would enable the artists of Wall to connect, collaborate, and create. This is an image of our second floor courtyard under construction, our community room, the rooftop garden, and the dance floor while it was being built. We also engaged a group of Sacramento artists to help put the finishing touches on the building. These are some of the images of uh, some of the many artists who created public art installations throughout the common areas of the community. So to summarize, the community includes housing in both new construction and in a historic landmark above ground floor retail and above patio space for the purpose of activating the streetscape. One of our retail spaces is a public market concept that we created in order to lease ground floor space to local businesses, some of which are operated by artists who live in the building. The community opened in 2015, and here are some finished images of the project. The rooftop garden, the courtyard, dance studio, the bar and barber shop on the ground floor called Bottle and Barlow, and the wall public market, as well as its patio outside. The energy activity and economic development created by this community of mostly low income artists has exceeded even my own expectations. Just to highlight a few examples, a resident artist named Jose designed a shirt which another resident named Trisha started to sell in the boutique she owns in the wall public market called Old Gold. This social media post reads, Old Gold proudly supports local artists. We carry the designs of over 20 small independent makers, and 75% of those live in Sacramento, and 20% of them live above the shop in Wall. Two residents teamed up last year and threw a concert in front of the building. The community also has had an annual block party since 2015, displaying live art, a maker's fair, and music, food, and games for over 5,000 visitors to the neighborhood. And the community recently inspired an art walk, a art walk that now takes place in the neighborhood on the first Friday of every month, an event which allows the artists of Wall to open up their home studios to the public and put their artwork on display. Developing the community has been a great source of pride for myself and our company. So in conclusion, I wanna just highlight what I believe to be some of the keys to our success. We engaged artists early and often in the development process. We created a variety of community spaces to allow the residents to interact and perform. We built a community with both market rate housing as well as income restricted, low income housing tax credit units. We developed an infill project that was integrated into a pedestrian friendly neighborhood. We took advantage of the great character provided by a historic structure, and we created a platform for artists to build a community and to do what they do best, imagine, create, and inspire. Thank you for your time, and thank you again for inviting me to testify.